reach new heights of calm, focus, and happiness. You're in Mindfulness Mode with me, your host and Mindfulness Life Coach, Bruce Langford. Mindful Tribe, we are all about music today. We're talking about uh, composing music. We're talking about how music can move you and the mindfulness of music. We're here with a singer-songwriter who is on a mission to serve others and help people overcome the materialistic message that's distorting modern society. And he is the host of a podcast called Pod Songs, where artists interview activists and then they write a song for good, hashtag song for good, to help them with their work. And so Jack is a talented singer songwriter and has released 12 albums over the last 20 years, eight albums in the last year. So that is very prolific. Jack Stafford, it's so good to have you with us. Jack, are you in mindfulness mode today? Bruce, I am now. If I wasn't before, I am now. (laughs) Well, I'm sure you were before, but it's great to have you on the show. What does mindfulness mean to you, Jack? Well, that's a great question. I've been on the, I've been asking myself that question many times. And the more times I ask it, the more times I'm mindful. This is the question that I've got. Uh, you'd like to use the fishing line technique. Once you've, your mind is a very difficult, a very slippery fish to catch. But if you hook it, you can, and you let it run, let it tire itself out. Don't break your line, reel it in when it's tired. Keep doing that. Keep pulling it in, going back and forth. And finally, your mind will come to you and ask you, what should I be thinking? Wow, what a great way to put it. When did you first hook that fish? Um, I think I realized when I, what a monster it was, what a whale, until I could not avoid it anymore. I was living in Amsterdam at the t- and I was having, I was running a business, I had a fashion business, I was a musician, mm-hmm. um, I was also a writer, I was running crazy, and I was in my 20s, because I grew up in England. Mm-hmm. Um, and I moved to Amsterdam when I got my first job. I worked as a writer over there for for all different types of things. And yeah, it was, I grew up in the countryside in England, but then Amsterdam was a crazy exciting place for a young man, as I'm sure you can imagine. Bruce. Yes. So it got, you know, I got away. It got away from me, and um, luckily I got into you know yoga and Ayurveda, and uh, eventually Vipassana meditation, where you go and sit and sit still for ten days. You know. So, yeah. If that doesn't focus the mind, yeah. if, if you don't have a breakdown, if it doesn't kill you, it can make you stronger. Yeah. And so ever since then, I've just been, you know, growing, going down this path, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. And when did you realize that you wanted to make music front row center in your life? I was in my, I was in my late teens, 19. I started in a band in England mm-hmm. and just kind of kept it going and, yeah, it was, I came very late to it. And, uh, you know, I got the three chords down. I yeah. never really developed much beyond that. But as a songwriter, you don't really need too much more. You can, you, they say, what do they, they say three chords and the truth. <laughs> yeah. All you need. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just been ever since then. Keep going. So tell us about your podcast, how that came about. Sure. Well, it's called Pod Songs. Mm-hmm. And, as you can tell, it's a podcast with songs because I was launching my my last album and it was, I live in the south of Italy and I can't go traveling around doing a normal promotional promotional thing. And then along came, along came COVID. I don't know if you've heard about this. I heard but, about uh, it. So it was quite difficult to promote. So I, I went down the podcast avenue and I did many podcast interviews to promote my album, talking about myself for an hour and I loved it. And I, it was such a fantastic experience. And I, as you do, you think I could do that. But what can I do? You know, there's already so many podcasts out there. People like yourself doing an amazing job. I can't, I've got no niche, you know, but two and two together. I'm a singer songwriter. I write songs about myself for many years. Got bored of that. Do every written of songs about everyone I meet. Everyone I was traveling. I was a, you know, super du- troubadour traveling around the world, writing songs as I, I went about all the local issues that I ran into, you know, protest songs. And if I interview people, sure, I should write a song about them. So that's how it evolved. And I wrote it. I went, I did a, I reached out to many, many people all around the world, 
started at the top and worked my way down. I got some quite famous people to come on the show, people like Lawrence Krauss and um, uh, AJ Jacobs and um, Alan Dershowitz and um, people who would never come if I just wrote to them saying, will you come and talk to me? But if I right. offer them a song, it's kind of different. I don't know if anyone's ever offered to write a song about you, but it's it's kind of flattering. I'm, Nobody I'm has, no. Well, there you go. And then, so I got these because nobody's done it before nobody's done a podcast where they write songs and so i i went quite hard you know i did eight albums in the first year because i was doing three episodes a week and i slowed down a bit to two and one and not because i was slow but because of the that the producer had to mix it and master it mm -hmm. and it i could have kept going it wasn't me bruce i could have. i see i could have kept going yeah <laughs> and so then tell me how this um created a business for you you know i know that it's a podcast and you write songs for people but what's the business part of this that actually works for you well i've got two horses in the race you see because as a podcast if i get a successful podcast that's that could be the main horse or as a musician i'm driving people to my music sure and the new phase pod songs 2.0 is guest artists. So I collaborate with a different musician every week. And I, again, I aim for well-known musicians who will come on and ha they have a fan base. And I'm also switching to more writing about causes because in the last hundred episodes, you know, I interviewed all types of people, people who've written books, people who had invented things, people who, you name it, promoting their business, promoting themselves but also some people promoting good causes and working for peace and protesters. And those were the ones I most enjoyed, you know, for a cause. So this is what I'm focusing on now. So protest songs, hashtag songs, you know, for climate change or, or gun rights or, or mental health, you name it. There's, there's thousands, a myriad of issues. So I'm getting guest guest musicians to come on and we'll write a song for good for a good cause and we really collaborate with that good cause so it's it's because this is a six month process to make a song you know it may they I may might be banging one out a week but you know it's like you take your food to market you take the you take your product to market but you've been working on that for a while so i have sure many many songs in various stages of production so we do the interview and then about six months later i release the song so I i'll see. have all these processes and hopefully on spotify for example uh the listenership will grow and grow because everyone follows who these artists collaborate with. So mm -hmm. either the pod songs works out or, or the music uh, or both. Hey, yeah. let's go for broke. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Well, I've worked in bullying prevention for a long time and I wanted to ask you a question about this. Have you experienced bullying in this work that you do? And, and do you have a story that you can share with us where mindfulness would have made a difference? Well, that's a great question. And I have been fortunate enough that um, I haven't been bullied in this, in this area and not, not since childhood, I was had any bullying and that was, so, and I was thinking back and so I'm not, I'm going to have to disappoint you here. I, I don't, <laughs> I'm have, not I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually quite happy. <laughs> well, Maybe in the future, if, if pod songs I'll get online bullying, that will be something to look forward to when you get. Well, some people say when that happens, then you're truly successful. Have you heard that exactly. before? Yes. I'd, I, yeah. I'd long, long for some haters. It's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream of yours. Yeah. So you really don't have a story about bullying then at all. And is that true? or? Yeah. Fortunately enough, I mean, uh, when I went to school, obviously I had moments of being sure sure bullied and also being the bully i mean yeah if i think back uh, uh, there were times that i picked on people why do you think that it. happened why do you think you were a bully i think it's it's a ten attention it's an attention thing and if yeah. mindfulness is is very useful because if you don't give people the bully the attention that they want they're not going to come coming back you know i don't know yeah. you i'm not telling you about this you're an expert but that's just that's some, something that if I was in that position again, if I didn't engage with them, I don't think it'd be a very satisfying experience for the bully. Yeah, so for that's sure. Just my... Yeah, totally. So, so thinking back, what was your life like as a kid? You said you grew up in a rural setting in England. What was it like? Like, what was a typical day for you like when you were seven years old? Wow. 
gosh, I haven't been asked that in a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in Lincoln. So yeah, I went to school and I was kind of the class clown. Oh, were you? Yeah. So, you know, they have all the different. So, you know, unfortunately, when you're in the class clown, it's normally a group of one. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, you know, the, if you're a nerd, you have friends, you yeah. know, you're in a group, you have activities. There's a whole myriad of activities. And if you're, you know, the cool kids or the musicians or the athletes, then, you know, you have your ready-made group. But when you're a group of one bouncing around. But you're feeding everyone, off your audience. Exactly, exactly. But it's it's a lonely, it's a lonely, lonely seven-year-old. Okay, so you're pretty lonely as a kid. Well, st I still am. That's why I'm doing this podcast, talking to you, because I'm living here in the south of Italy nobody to speak to thankfully uh -huh. you've taken pity on me you have me on your show yeah. otherwise i'm just you know well life can be lonely that's for sure yeah. and especially during the pandemic and you got hit so badly in italy early on what was that like for you well we were in lockdown we couldn't we weren't allowed to go outside the house right you know and would you be so, arrested if you were caught going outside of the house no, but you could get a fine. You get a fine. You get a fine. A, a, a steep fine, yes. Yeah. So you were allowed mm -hmm. to go out to for groceries once a day, or but you weren't allowed even allowed to go out for exercise. So wow, that's kind of, that's kind of a pretty. Wow. That was a that was a shock, but it was a great time for me. I started pod songs, so maybe right. I wouldn't so have had a podcast. Yeah. yeah, it all worked out. But but wow, that was quite a while that you were locked down, wasn't it? It was one or two months. Yeah, I think it was a. But it was a great time. I really, I really had a great time. So please don't cry for me. I had my girlfriend at home. She's normally out for work. And I could, you know, go, I worked on my garden. It was beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it yeah. would have been, it would have been nice to be able to go for a walk on the beach. We're just, we're half a kilometer away from the beach. And oh, that not close. even to be able to do that. That felt really claustrophobic. Yeah. But you can do that today. I can and I did. You can go down to the, and you did already. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, so it's not so bad being lonely if you can go walk, walk on the beach. Isn't that true? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the difference between being lonely and being mindful and being, you know, it's like the difference between being poor and choosing poverty. It's a huge difference. It's, yeah. It's one is tremendously liberating. The other is tremendously op oppressive and depressing. So who is one of the most fascinating people you've interviewed and then wrote a song about who pops into your mind when I ask that question? Well, probably as you've found, it's the unknown people who haven't been on past podcasts before. I, I have found that. That's funny because I thought I should get all, all the big names and, you know, that would be, yeah. they would be fascinating to speak to, but I found that they're on autopilot. They're yes. telling me because, because I, I yeah. you've probably found this, you research, you guess, so you listen to, at least I did. I listened to, you know, as well, I'm gardening in the morning. I listened to three episodes of them on other podcasts. Sure. So that I can write down the questions and ask them exactly the same thing. I don't sound like a schmuck. Yeah. But they're, they're on autopilot. They're, they're, they're saying the same things again and again. So That's right. by the time I get to the evening and I'm ready to interview them, I'm bored in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway. The early days but so like i say the most interesting ones the ones who've never done a podcast before and the most interesting guy was an irishman who went over to norway very young guy and a very spiritual guy and he was in norway on an island working as a chef and he used to cycle across the island to go to work and he stopped at these different stone stone circles to meditate or light a fire sometimes you know on the way home i don't and stone started speaking to him and then the fire spoke to him and he said take me because it, well the question he asked him himself was how can i i'm in a place of abundance not i don't know if you've been to norway but it's the most beautiful place the most the richest country in one of the richest countries in the world they have everything mm. they have abundance they have so what can i take back to ireland which is in a real doldrums what can i take there that will help i'm only one man what can i do and he said and the fire spoke to him and said take me to ireland in a in a, in a psychic way so mm -hmm. so he thought well this is crazy you know <laughs> this is not this is not a good idea i can't 
very well put a fire on a plane so but so the, it kept with him and he was on this um, you know it, as people do if the universe is going to show me the way i will i will walk the path you know so i'm open to it he's kind of a spiritual guy like that so he was sitting on the on the dock of the bay one day and uh, this boat came in and a, a one a fantastic boat uh, looked like a viking ship or black with not tattoos on a boat but carvings yeah and the guy said to him he had he had come into the port because he'd seen this huge fire and these people waving to him from the from the the pier and it was a long way to get into the into the bay and when he arrived there there was nobody else there and no fire and it was only this this boy sitting there and he said no there's no one else here so they got got to chatting and the the boy told him his whole story and he was a from an ancient nordic family and after a day or two together he said i'm going to give you my boat and you can sail to ireland so this is a, an hour long story so i'm going to make if you want to hear it the rest of it please go to the please go and listen to the pod songs episode but it's right. an incredible story so he puts the fire into the boat they put, they put a stove into the boat and he sails in the winter through the north sea wow i mean higher than your waves higher than your house without an engine crashes make makes the boat again shipwrecked make builds the boat again sets off again it's an epic story of divas and oh, it's it's unbelievable story unbelievable and then the song i wrote is unbelievable as well because i was so inspired i wrote a fantastic wow song, so yeah Wow. I, I can't wait to check that out. That is really, really intriguing. I want to ask you this. You've written so many songs. You, you really have, Jack. Do you sometimes think, oh my gosh, have I, used, have I used that melodic fragment before? Is this going to sound like another song? Is this, is this really, truly unique? Do you think that way when you're writing? Well, the way I write is I channel them. So I'm super inspired. I've had the interview. Um, and I just play the guitar and start singing and something comes out, you know, mm -hmm. a fragment of a verse or a chorus or, the, or a line. Someone said something interesting. Mm -hmm. And yes, they all sound exactly the same. Um, same chords. I've used those chords again and again. And it's a miracle how they, they don't sound different. But luckily I have these fantastic musicians. So we do one song reggae style. We do another song rock. We do another song and, you know, they'll switch it. They say, this is better in minor. Let's slow it down. Let's speed it up. So by the time it's, you know, it's, it's the same insemination. It's the same mm -hmm. germination. But by the time it's birthed, you know, six months later, it's a different beast. So nice. I don't worry about that. You know, I'm, I'm really right. channeling the songs in a, in, a, in a way it's coming through me. Right. So it sounds like you have a, quite a team working with you that takes that initial that initial information that initial idea that you've created and then makes it into a song exactly i have to record to a click track so i have to play along exactly in time with a guitar with acoustic guitar and then the melody and i have to record those separately mm -hmm. and then they'll often so they have this click track so they it's in time and they can cut it up they they often just take off the guitar just leave the rough vocal and then add in all the, add the rhythm and then the, some more guitars, piano, strange sounds, anything completely different. Then I re-sing it a couple of weeks later on top. And then it's, I'm singing on something and then I put all my energy in and I maybe change the phrasing. I change the attitude. So it's this, it's this evolution that creates something different every time. Very cool. Do you play any other instruments besides the guitar? No, I'm, I just play the guitar yeah, very badly. <laughs> well, it's a really cool project. It's very interesting that you're doing this. I, uh, I want to ask you, do you have some other thought on the sort of edge that you're thinking, well, maybe soon I'll do this other thing, or I'm going to move forward and, and change what I'm doing, or are you just going to, are you going to continue on doing what you're doing? Well, it's a very cyclical thing because in in italy in the summer it's very hot there's not much air conditioning and so we really had to break take a break during the summer it was a crazy crazy time so i do all the interviews in a in a in a in a, 
first mm-hmm. and then I take a break and then I have a chance to to, th- to rethink it so over the summer like I said you know I changed direction it's a very subtle change you know just still songs inspired by interviews but it's amazing how still with that limited idea I could do something different like imagine in the future perhaps I have filmmakers come on and I have a conversation with them about their film mm-hmm. and I write a song inspired by it and that goes a song could go in the film yes. or perhaps I could have a writer come on and they do an audio book of a short story for an hour and then I write a song inspired by that so it doesn't have to be this this interviewing people sure there's there's room for these artistic collaborations and like I say you know I just wrote over a song about um, this little girl who died in London from air pollution. She was the first girl who, who um, was officially has air pollution on her death certificate. She died from asthma and the coroner that she was the first person in the world. So I wrote a song about that and then that's developed. We make a music video for it and that's going and growing, growing. So even though the song, the songs, you know, have a life of their own, there's this forest, and I don't know if you know about, pod, you know, well, obviously you know about the way podcasts, it's not always the newest episode that gets the most listeners. Yeah, for it's sure. Old episodes. Yeah. So, so great interviews, great songs, things that things are happening all the time. And then I do a spin off of that one. And it's just this, who knows where I'll be doing in there. I could be doing musicals in five years. I have no yeah. idea what's going to be happening. It's very, exciting. Very if I knew I'd be bored. <laughs> yeah. What's the best thing about living in Italy? um wow the food's pretty good the fresh air it's uh it's super cheap i just went to the market and i bought all my vegetables this morning for five dollars wow all your vegetables for five dollars it's cheaper to buy the organic from the market from the people that have grown it themselves than it is to go to the supermarket and buy the stuff that was flown in from Mm -hmm. chile or so and it's so it's amazing the fresh air I have mountains here. I'm in the Chilento, which is opposite the Amalfi Coast. I look out my window, I can see Capri. Uh, you know, an hour and a half is north is Naples. So if you want the culture, you can go there. Yeah, and, and my girlfriend's into sailing. So she, she goes out with the, does the sailings on the boat with the races every Sunday. I'm a cyclist. Mm-hmm. I go up into the mountains. Have I sold you yet? Is it? Am I painting a picture you, of you sold me on the first when you said it's the food because I figured you, you know, had to start with food, but uh, <laughs> yeah, food, and then you just kind of branched out from there. And I've heard that bread and pasta and things like that are just so different than they are in North America, so much more healthy for you and and different. Is that true? Well, there is. You're both. You're right, and you're you're wrong also because there it is much much better than america yeah i've been to america and it's just the ingredients are are not very good so yeah yeah it's grown in on a on a industrial scale so here is the ingredients are much better but there is an epidemic of diabetes oh is they're having you know they're having flour for breakfast lunch and dinner you know biscuits for breakfast pasta every day for lunch Mm -hmm. and bread with the pasta and just starch, 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 yeah. just beige food. So, yeah, you know, they're, it's people, they're just ordinary people. So there, there is a lot of diabetes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Sorry well, to first put the, put a black mark on uh, paradise well, there, but no, uh, it's okay. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta face reality. Don't we sometimes, but there yeah. is the Mediterranean diet was, uh, when Pioppi, which is just half an hour down the coast where Ancel Keys came over to, uh, to live there and he did lift lift to 100 so yeah. but you know you have to the mediterranean diet is pasta maybe once or twice a week you know? right it's, not it's so much pasta a lot of and bread yes you know that you know the best thing about the food that i realized since i came here because when i lived in the big cities and you go into the supermarket everything's in season right everything and i know from my ayurveda studies that the secret to to health is seasonal eating You've got to eat change with the seasons and that's what we do. So, you know, I've got, I'll have cut artichokes flowering in my garden soon and I'll just eat artichokes every day and I'll be, you know, and I'll, I'll get that. They'll pull through my bile, my digestive tract, clean me out mm. and then I'll be sick of them. Never want to see another one again. And that's 
but it's done its work. And so that's the same with every food as it comes into season, you know, the lemons will be good for cleaning. And then, you know, there's no fruit available in the winter. And then in the summer there's abundance and then the nuts come in. So you get gorge on them. And it's the same when you go to the market, you get the vegetables that are there in season. And those are the ones for you at that time for your body. So you know, this is what I've really learned. And living in season is very much easier here and cheaper and healthier. So that's, that's the big takeaway that I have. I'm glad you shared that Jack. Cause I didn't really realize that. I didn't think about that because yeah, here in Canada, we can go to the grocery store and you see all the different vegetables and they're brought in from California or Peru or wherever it is. But the, the thing is a lot of them, you cut it open and you taste it and it looks great, but there's no real flavor to a lot of it, you know? You couldn't tell well, whether friend, you're eating a tomato or, you know, a potato half the time, you know, like there's just not that much flavor. Well, I know my friend worked in one of these vegetable places and you know how they do it. They pick all the fruit and vegetables when it's not ripe. Yeah. And exactly. they, so it's, if it's green, if it's a tomato, for example, and then it's, so it's shipped and it doesn't get damaged in transit it's super hard. And then the day before they're going to sell it, they put it in these huge gas chambers and they pump in this um, gas. I forget the name of it, but it's the ripening gas. It was mm -hmm. what fruit ethanol or something. And then they open the doors in the morning, the next morning, and everything's ooh, looks beautiful and it's ready looks, to go. Yeah, it looks yeah. beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not got that taste no. because it hasn't it hasn't evolved. It hasn't finished no. its cycle. So yeah. Yeah, and I guess that happens with organic. I don't know if that happens with the organic section as well. So I, yeah, you know, I money. don't know either, but yeah, very interesting. Jack, as we move forward in the interview, I want to ask you five quick answer questions. So just 30 second answers are perfect. The first one is this, who is one person who has been a really powerful mindfulness influence in your life? I'd say Nehemiah Davis. He's a, a yogi who I discovered when I was in India. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, and a website called mysticknowledge.org. And he's an incredible teacher. He's taught me so much about advanced yoga techniques. Mysticknowledge.org, you said, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Mysticknowledge.org. I'll check that out. Okay. Well, let's talk about your emotions. So tell me how mindfulness has helped with the way you deal with your emotions. Yeah. Well, I just, I try and listen to the mind as if it's somebody else talking mm. it's a radio so i'm listening to radio jack all day and i think it helps to to say to yourself you i'm boring you are boring i am boring myself do i really have to listen to you and it's kind of a shock when you if you say it to someone else um because this the mind is a radio i'm just I'll be thinking about this interview when I go and have dinner later on my own. I'll be replaying things. And right. Often it's just so boring that I just, that I'll turn on something else to distract me. Sure. You know? And I'll have to listen to another podcast, but that's not really <laughs> so just to drown out the noise. And yeah. then later on, I'll be listening to, I'll be repeating because the mind is just a radio, you know, it's just a, it's a receiving set. I am not my mind. My mind is just this, this, this receiving set, the radio, and I'm the man with the hand on the dial. And I have to be the difference between a, the difference between a great man and a, your average Joe is that they have control over, mm -hmm. over the set. Yeah. Jack, I love the way you describe that. That's really, really awesome. Tell us how breathing is part of your mindfulness practice. Well, I do pranayama every morning. I do half an hour, uh, 32 minutes exactly, because that's the Every day, the sun, every, all the time, the sun is radiating five pranas and it changes every 32 minutes. So if you do a fixed practice of pranayama for 32 minutes, you're going to guarantee to get even the pranas evenly. So I do that. And um, with a Vipassana meditation and the Buddhist techniques that I did before this, the gladdening, that mm -hmm. really helps, you know, you know, the sh I can hear people breathing and it's, man people just don't know how to breathe people are messed up you can hear them do this you know the stress breaths or they're yeah. virtually suffocating themselves yeah the breath is brain waves 
I have a, a, a heart rate strap that I use with a, the Sweet Beat app. You're mm -hmm. probably going to ask me about the app. Also, I'm going to ask I you am. another question in advance. The Sweet Beat app is a fantastic because you can see you get up, you get the up and down curves of your heart rate as it speeds and slows. When you breathe in, your heart rate accelerates. When you breathe out, yes. your heart rate slows. So you can see this, and breath is brain waves. If you, you know, if you have one the heart co heart coherent chain, as uh, I wrote about in Bliss Brain when I interviewed the um, uh, meditation teacher, uh, I forgot his name at the moment, but. Um, so if you do that six seconds in, six seconds out, start the heart coherence chain into a world of bliss brain, you can you can get that. So the breath is key. And, you know, you, if you, you just got to be breathing super gentle, silently in and out for six seconds. And it's actually one of the secrets from the mystery schools from way back when is that we're all born with a certain amount of breaths, a predetermined number of breaths. So if you lengthen your breath, you lengthen your life. So the longer you can breathe in, I can do my yoga. I can breathe in, breathe in and out twice a minute, breathe in 15 seconds, out 15 seconds. And this is super relaxing and super ujjayi, gentle ujjayi breathing. And this, the breath is, well, we can just stop here and talk about the breath for the rest of the show because it all begins and ends with the breath. Fascinating. And you've really shared some, really interesting things if you if we extend our breath we extend our life that is yep. really interesting i hadn't really heard that before at least put in that way yeah you look at your dog or your cat on the floor you know pumping through them mm -hmm. uh, or an elephant or, or i don't know a whale mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> bigger the bigger the animal the longer the life let same number of breaths um so yeah slow it down what well, people are always the, the greatest things are the simplest if you just people are looking you know cryogenics or 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 all these ways to preserve the life or pills is long lengthen your breath you also have a happier life don't matter if you want to be you know you can tell from your breath if you're stressed or you can just listen to people's breath and it's just the long, quiet breaths are the best. Yeah, yeah, that's very true, very true. Well, and the app you said is called Sweet Beat, right? Mm. Sweet Beat, mm -hmm. that's the app that H you- HRV monitor. Okay, and then uh, what book would you recommend that's related to mindfulness? I've got this book, Contact Your Higher Self Through Yoga. And this was introduced, I was introduced to this by Nehemiah Davis. I was in, I was in India. And I started wait, I was having some amazing Ayurveda treatment and um, they actually put these oils on your body um, and they're so powerful that you have to have two weeks preparation. It's, it's heavy prana oils. It's a very, very special technique. And I started waking up every night at three, three thirty three on the dot, you know, without a clock. And I thought, that's funny. So, you know, you Google it as you do, and it talks about, you know, it's your higher self contacting you or, you know, look out for synchronicities in the daytime. So I did that and I saw this, I saw Kundalini here. I was in behind a Kundalini center and the doctor mentioned Kundalini and someone else mentioned Kundalini. And so I started getting into what's Kundalini and I Googled it and I watched a, a video about the Serpent Power book, which is an ancient Sanskrit text and it's very complicated so you need a youtube video to understand it as i'm sure you go to it's a go-to thing now yeah yeah and so i found nehemiah and he started talking about it and um and he introduced me to this um to this to his to his master dr george king who was a western master of yoga so he was in the 1950s in england practicing yoga 10 hours a day in london without going to india so that's that's pretty intense, you know. That's very intense. And not, you know, not not downward facing dog. I mean, it's, we're talking mantra, pranayama. We're talking deep mystic yoga techniques. And so he wrote this book, Contact Your Higher Self Through Yoga. And it's these techniques for, for contacting your higher self because I didn't really understand it before because there is a big, with Western psychology, there's a 
big flaw in that what they missed from the when they went to the eastern teachings is that they they have the subconscious and the conscious but they so they group our highest elements and our lowest elements into the subconscious which is which is the the root problem of many many therapies because our higher self is infant is is high is infinitely superior to our consciousness and our subconscious it's not too shabby you know it can measure a a milligram of vitamin a and send it to a cell in the body and it handles all our processes but our higher self is the whole shebang you know that's this is this is who we got to be contacting so you know i did the vipassana and the mindfulness and the all these meditate meditation techniques to still the mind the monkey mind but that's just that's a, that's a footstep on the threshold that's just getting control of something that's out of control with all, i do all these techniques now this mantra and pranayama to to get to to, to receive thought higher thoughts from my higher self and this is the way i'm going so it's much more than just you know you get a lot more from it you it's an infinitely more you got you're on the path rather than just you know because these mindfulness and they the consciousness and being in the moment you know and uh, you know the Eckhart Tolle and things like that and being in and out is is fantastic and it's it's a huge step up but once you learn from Dr. King of what we how far we have to go it's it's a it's a, there's a lot more to learn. I truly agree. Yeah. Very, very interesting. If someone was listening today, Jack, and they're just feeling, oh, I, I'm just not in the loop. I don't feel grounded. I feel stressed. What words of advice would you give to them? What, where should they start? Well, predetermine all your thoughts and actions. This is what Dr. King said. Predetermine your success. So, the little things you know if you feel like you're running uphill make life go downhill for you predetermine all your thoughts and actions work backwards before you go to bed tonight make sure the breakfast is out ready for you you know before you're going to take a shower before you take the shower put the clothes out on the bed that you're going to wear when you come out of the shower do all these 101 things so all you're predetermining all your thoughts and actions so everything is happening for you you're you're helping yourself you know and all these these things will be because when you're you know when you're caught in the moment and you're your own mind and you're depressed you know you don't there's a there's a mantra you can repeat sorry an affirmation you can repeat and a mantra is always in sanskrit this is one mistake of a vipassion uh, uh an affirmation is is the, in english so i am i am my high i am what does I say? I am the divine presence, which is creating perfection throughout my whole life. And if you repeat this to yourself, I am the divine presence, which is creating perfection th throughout my whole life. And you do it, you do it with some of these small actions, then it makes life so much easier. Just concentrate on the details. Don't just think, well, am I depressed now? What, what th these big things are going wrong with my life. Just work out the details, fix all these little things, clean up your kitchen, clean up your bedroom, clean up and get your head down and everything will flow much easier. So much wisdom. Jack, thanks so much for being on the show. It's all about pod songs and hashtag song for good. And we can go and, and hear you. And what's the website that we should go to? Is Podsongs.com. Podsongs Podsongs on isn't? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Podsongs. I've got it down podsongs.com <laughs> just like that not even difficult to spell very easy to spell pod oh, and I've, act I've actually songs. started another podcast as well miss the mystic cast so oh. this is where i'm just talking about i'm interviewing other people from the ethereum society which is from dr george king oh, um, that's interesting is, yeah it's this religious organization i'm involved with from dr king who founded it right. and it's a very small organization. I mean, it's a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand people worldwide. It's in Los Angeles and, mm -hmm. uh, and London. And it's, it's amazing teachings, yoga techniques, um, and a lot more than that. 
And so I'm really using my platform to promote it. Well, Jack, thanks so much for being on Mindfulness Mode today. It's a great pleasure to meet you. All the best to you. Bruce, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye now.